And here we go. This is Flash at 20% off on reallibertymedia.com. Brought to you by the good folks at Grimner. <laughs> he puts us out there all over the place. Thanks a lot for all the techie stuff you do, Mr. Grim. And say hello to the bots and bodies hanging out in RLM tonight. Today my night always ahead of you i live in the future a few hours ahead of everybody else anyway we saying hey to barman beetle grimner moose girl miss kate brackets dc asmo chalcedony gram z i underscore b underscore d underscore c java doctor two j dread meister brow ponder gander rain Rob Works, Trust No One, Vanna Wyatt, Weather Dork, Z Betsy Phantom. And well then, hello honey, Circles here, on the couch, crochetting. Colfax 101, Cyborg Noodle, Dakota, Me Frumpy 2. Gromit, Java, Dr. Underscore, Jays, Nines, Jays, Kozu, <laughs> Carl Marx, the bot, he's fun. <clears throat> Kiss, mm, mm, Pone Sauce, Sock Puppet, Slamo, Vinny Cuss, and Anti as W4DKV. And those are the bots and bodies for you folks to entertain yourself with today here on the Real Liberty Media.com. In the chat room where all the greatest minds of the 20th century gather to figure out what's going on today. <laughs> We've got it figured out, but the the consensus is it's pretty small. Not a lot of people want to face it, but if you're not sitting down, sit down. If you're a smoker, light something up to burn. And this is going to really be a shock to all of you. But after all these years, we have decided it's all bullshit. Right down to the $21 trillion debt. Because if you believe this shit's real, well, there may be a cog squeaking in your machinery. Maybe a little slow oil leak. Oh, I don't know. You ready to blow a gasket? <laughs> I know most people say they are. And what happened today that made the headlines of the world? I woke up to my wife telling me about how the English uh, have arrested old J.A., whatever, Julian Assange. And... She says to me, well, all the stuff he did, I, for two minutes, can't figure out what this guy did that was so exciting that other people hadn't done. And, well, she went into the politics of it. Well, he got rid of this by exposing it. Yeah, but see, the governments are sneaky. You get rid of one pest, and there's 90 pests to take that pest place. So you really, you just opened up a whole new can of shit. They call it something different, and they please the public with nice words, and shit goes on like it's always gone on. And whatever's going on, if you're pleased with it, you just may need some kind of help. <laughs> well, I'm looking at the overall, you know, the larger scope of things with all this wonderful... Um, exciting news that we have to talk about on the <laughs> reallibertymedia.com today. And it didn't last long either. I think people are just pretty much newsed out. I know I've been newsed out for probably the last year. I dread opening a new link. I like the old links, the ones that tell me the truth about what's really been going on. Anyway, last night, Grim did his uh, leftovers show, and I get it the next day, if you didn't already know that. And today, I was amazed that he was reading about colloidal silver. 
And yeah, I just recently saw links about the work the FDA did to criminalize yet one more product because their game isn't about cure. Their game is about profit. So, you know, all this talk people give us about, well, I don't have any money. Well, why don't you go invest in one of these medical fucking places and make a shitload of money? Oh, education. Got universities with bank accounts that could fuel a small country. And there's a few of them. They're not hard to find. I think Dun & Bradstreet prints a, a catalog. Probably online now. I haven't bothered with this in years. But businesses have a thing called a credit rating and even in this bullshit economy they still keep score the old-fashioned way with zeros and ones and fives and sevens and twos and threes little numbers all over the place with a whole shitload of zeros at the end to make it look really good and that's how we live i don't mind i guess in the long run but fuck i wonder what it would be like if we just lived in whatever was best for us. I think, hmm, what would be the first thing I'd shift if I was in charge of the world? I don't know. I think I'd go back to, I would put it right back on the individual and let them figure it out for their self. Kind of like it is now, without all the advertising to lead you to the shit that's going to fuck you up slowly over many years so that you can spend the end of your days suffering in an old folks home wishing for death <laughs> that's the way things make the movies make it look like that oh the people i've seen come and go through life make it seem like that too for the most part but here we are we're breathing we're living we're doing our daily shit and Still can't seem to get along good enough to make life interesting for everyone. It's only interesting if you have a, a really good sense of humor or access to the fiat currency that we all enjoy using to survive life. Hmm. Now, that seems more like a topic for something with Vinny in a perfect world, but... Because this is the Control Games Part 4. I guess the reason I brought up the colloidal silver is just one more example of the government working on your behalf to make sure that your life is comfortable and that you don't need anything that you need. Well, I got bad news and People don't seem to believe me. I think a few of them call me out, right out. Call me a liar. Say, make this stuff up. Oh, gug, 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 gug. Yeah, no. I think, uh, I don't think I make anything up. I think I just see it in a particular light that other people don't share. Maybe one out of ten. Maybe two out of ten, depending on the level of marijuana that the user I'm speaking of uses. I think pot is a great assistance to seeing reality in a better light than the one that the press shows you. I mean, Christ, if you can get past that magic bullet story and ever believe anything that the Fed says after that, wow, well, maybe there's a reason for all this medication and I'm just the only one that doesn't get it. Hard to believe that everybody else is crazy, but I'm not. Wait a minute. That's the ob absolute opposite of the story. I get called crazy all the time. Hmm. Then again, in the reallibertymedia.com chat, we have a thing called quotes. Oh, we quote some of the greatest minds in history. And one of the, I'll paraphrase because I don't do quotes very well. But to be considered sane in a profoundly sick society is not a compliment. <laughs> no, 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 no. And I think we have that agreement amongst uh, 
the general population of RealLibertyMedia.com, I don't think they, they don't think that uh, society runs in a fashion that's good for all of us. I think there's a few folks out there that recognize the same fraud I recognize. I won't name him Rob Works, Grimner. Oh, Moose Girl, maybe Miss Kate. Depends on the day. She's She doesn't agree with everything I say, but every now and again, I, I even get Miss Kate. Oh, there's others, but we all know who we are, don't we? Hmm. And a few of us know who we aren't. Hey, Vinny, I didn't, I, didn't I read your name? I don't even remember now. I read so many damn names tonight. I think Vinny came in late. Anyway. So, control games, and they got us in every possible respect there is. And I was talking about this this Link guy I watch on YouTube, because his name is so bizarre. It's like a, a girl name in Latin or something. <clears throat> and he is a pompous fucking know-it-all. But, his challenge is very similar to Larry's. Larry Woods, without the nice part attached to it. And he says, yeah, if you don't believe it, fuck off. <laughs> Go with the opposition and show me how well that works. Because everything that we've been taught so far in our history, most of us, it's turned out to be a load of shit. Or they show you part of it. Or they believe they know things that they don't really know. They just make shit up. This will shut those morons out there in the public up. They won't question us. We have PhDs at the end of our names. <laughs> Wait a minute. They're talking about what drives people. Oh, somebody thinks somebody is a bit of a prick and egotistical. I hope you're talking about me, Vinny. That sounds like my activity right there. I'm the best thing since sliced something. I don't know what it was. Anyway, let's see what's going on now. I think the control games have got us in a... They've got us pitted against each other in weird ways. You know, this competitive shit like... Uh, for fuck's sake, if you're on the reallibertymedia.com chat room, sometimes you're not entitled to your own personal opinion depending on the topic, and sometimes depending on who's in the room topicking with you. There's just some topics that are just, no matter where you go, they can't be discussed. And I think of this because the other morning, I think it was yesterday morning, I... Well, when I come on, it's Frumpy is in Canada. So he's late night. I'm early morning when we're on at the same time. Okay. And he, he was making a point about seeing a flat link, uh, a flat earth link, and something that they must have said in their guide's attention. And the, I know how it feels because the minute you say anything, hey, you know, these flat earth people got a good point with this. Well, then the round earth people jump all on top of you and start peeing on you because he agreed with the flat earthers. He must be insane. Ah, uh, Vinny's talking about me. Don't worry about it, Rob Works. Anyway, so... Uh, any, what's the point of that? The point is, to me, that both sides of the story have interesting you know, ways to explain the proof of what they're trying to pitch you. Okay. They call that in sales. They call that features and benefits. And the weird part about this sales pitch to me is there's no price tag on it at the end. <clears throat> Usually when you pitch that hard to believe something... That nobody can prove one way or the fucking other. You just got to believe. Well, hmm, things don't end well for everybody for some reason. Now, the the wealthy don't suffer. wonder what that's about. Mm, the working man don't necessarily suffer either, but he's just got to do all the dirty shit work that 
you know, rich people don't want to do because they got money. I, I don't even know what the fuck that's all about. But what I'm getting at is if you... <coughs> If you look outside the window and you see something that nine other people can't see, those nine people are going to argue with you until their balls fall off because it ain't there to them. Hmm. Kind of puts us in one of these boxes where you're right or you're wrong. Now, I'm going to go with everybody's wrong. Not No story I've heard yet convinces me that anybody knows what the fuck they're talking about. Except for this one fella I've run into on YouTube. <clears throat> He's a little bit full of himself with his knowledge, but he leans towards the Larry Woods explanations about all this stuff that we know. It all boils down to vibration and frequency. And how the energy is delivered for us to use in a way that's good for us. And what things are compared to what we're told they are. One point he brings up that was really interesting was, there's no such thing as a wave, he says to me on this link. Hmm. says, not that the wave doesn't exist. It's that the wave is a result of something else in motion, not the wave itself. So, and he uses this as an example. If you stand in a puddle of water up to your waist, say a pool of water, and just stand there, the water is still. But if you start wa waving your arms around, you're going to make a wave that's going to eventually hit the, the shore of the, or the circumference of the pool you're in. But it's not the wave. It's the wave is the result of the action of movement. Well, it kind of opened up a new door for me. So, hmm. And this, cl this clown claims that he knows more about magnetism than anybody on the planet Earth. Hmm. And at the end of all of his videos, he's pretty much the same. You know, either you like it, you don't like it, and either way... If you don't like it, what are you doing here? And if you do like it, what are you going to do with what you just learned? Because all this knowledge that we accumulate over the interwebs is all wonderful, you know, but it's like going to college. You'll never use it. You might remember it. And you can say it backward and forward and in three different languages, but it'll never do anything for you. You'll never apply it to anything physical in your life. Now, not a lot of folks would agree with that particular comment either because some of them are employed by the man, baby. They got jobs and careers and life experience and all this other shit. But then again, if you start looking into these books about how this stuff actually works and what we're actually doing... The end result of society is, that's a big plan. I'm telling you, the way it looks to me, with all the information I've gathered and sorted out my little boxes, and I've got, okay, this goes here, and that goes there, and this goes here. There doesn't ever seem to be anything that doesn't quite belong, because if you look at the way it was approached, that would be the result you would expect. There you go, sweetie. My wife was coming to rob me and bring me elixir. So, hold on one second here, folks. Well, anyway, I guess I could post a link on the RLM, but I don't think I don't think this guy I'm talking about would be very attractive to the mind that's uh, superior to the rest of the world and already knows everything. This guy, you you need to be in a position to listen to what you don't understand and to what other people haven't ever really brought to you as a topic in the first place. So there's not a lot of reference to compare what he's saying to. But one thing he does say, and I love the shit out of it, is he calls Einstein a, what Tesla called him, because he quotes Tesla constantly. 
Another attractive thing is the man knows about the man behind Tesla. I forget his name, but I'm bad with names. Lucky I can remember Tesla's name. Boy, if he didn't build those cars, I'd sure... No, I'm kidding. I'd know who Tesla was. I thought it was a kind of a cheap shot to name the car Tesla, to put it in the public eye as something new instead of bringing it back from the old. Look at what we just found. <laughs> and, uh, so when you ask somebody that's 20 years old if they ever heard of Tesla, they're going to look at you like, what, you don't drive? You never heard of a car? What are you, a bonehead? And then you tell them, oh, no, no, not that one, the real one, huh? <laughs> and then you, the deer eyes light up right before you, and you can see for a mile. Anyway, let me cough real quick here. <coughs> oh, Vinny is having a round of words with the RLM tonight. What's up, Vincent? Oh, uh, come on, get over it. <laughs> Everybody's angry just because they arrested Julius Julian Assange is no reason to go all mental on the LibertyMedia.com chat. That's Jew Dredd's job, and I don't think he can handle the competition. So leave him alone. Stop being the center of the world, Vincent. Let somebody else take a turn. It's a big world. Let me take a sip here. Mmm. Ah, that tastes a very vanilla-like. Uh, I'm getting that uh, old guy tea and sh Wow, boy, am I different than I used to be. I used to drink shots of whiskey. Now I drink glasses of tea while I'm doing radio, too. Well, I used to do shots on the radio with Mary all the time. Do my dork table and start out with a shot. About every 20 minutes, try to do a shot before the show was over. And the goal was to see if I'd ever get out of pocket with Mary and behave in a different fashion. And nothing ever happened. We just told crazier jokes than the show before. But never uh, never once did I ever have a, a real argument. We just disagree about everything, me and Mary. And now, wow, what a change. She's um, she's taking control of her ability to see life the way she wants to fucking see it. And, you know, maybe we don't give Hansel that same respect. You know, if you want to be a follower and you want to do what the crowd does, well, there you go. What you're doing in Real Liberty Media is beyond anybody's understanding. And it makes no sense. You got no peers here. Nobody wants to fucking support Trump. <laughs> all, these, all the time you must spend looking up for all these links that I never... Well, maybe you got a fan club on The Real Liberty. I don't. Uh, I don't open anything that you post. I just wanted to say it on the radio in case you're listening so you get it. You know, Because sometimes, son, you don't seem to get it. And your boy Goober this morning, was he was in rare form. Good God. What would you do if you had a spaceship? How would you bitch at us every fucking day on the internet if you were in a spaceship? Now, come on. Let's be realistic. <laughs> Just apply to Bill Gates for the funding to make a death ray out of batteries and see what you get. Hmm. Eh. Nah, that would be too much work, wouldn't it? Hey, Rob Works and Vinny are having it out today. One more time. It's their usual spat <sighs> come on you guys need a new argument how about maybe we should make Vinny and rob works co-presidents <laughs> of the real liberty media.com chat room <laughs> i then they could uh get along better maybe i don't know wonder what it is because I got the same problem with certain guy. I don't know what the, what the fuck makes that happen. You know, don't you ever just wonder? The control games that we live in have created this anger and jealousy. And I'm better than you. And my car does 90 miles in second gear. And I got 12 inches. And I blah, 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 blah. 
and yeah, come on. Nobody's got half of what they tell you they got. Unless they tell you they got nothing. Then they're lying about that because nobody's got nothing on the internet. We got headphones, <laughs> speakers, screens, keyboards, mice. I don't know. You guys are cracking me up though. And uh, I think that uh, Rob and Vinny are just playing a little damn word game and see what we're going to do about it. Because Rob's sarcastic and Vinny's sneaky. So maybe this is just for our entertainment. I remember having a conversation with Vincent long ago. And it was about, I wonder, you know, how people, other people, look on to an argument when two people are bantering in a chat room and they disagree. Because this isn't my first rodeo. This isn't my first chat room. This isn't my first time where I've had an opponent in a chat room that did not agree with me. So when I see other people do it, I'm more amused than anything else. Because I get along with the people doing it for the most part. Just one, one or two people I don't get along with. And I think that's by choice, because <laughs> I grew up with that shit about guilt by association, you know. If you hang out with that piece of shit, long-haired motherfucking pothead, guess what you're going to be known as? Long-haired motherfucking pothead. <laughs> so, who cares? And then you grow up and you find out that, wow... A lot of people care about what you do in your personal business and what <laughs> what you are. <laughs> all this all this nonsense. Man. I don't know ten people close enough to me that I give a fuck about finding out about their personal background and their business and their favorite color and what they like and how they roll their cigarette. Do they roll it left handed or do they roll it right handed? These things matter in a world, I'm telling you. Because 14% of the population is left-handed, which makes them the weirdos. And the rest of us, well, we're all right, because there's a lot of us. Our group is bigger. But what would happen if the left-handed people tried to take over the world? <laughs> left-handed people taking them well it's not much more ridiculous than the reality of what we got we have a group of zionists calling themselves jews taking over the fucking world right in front of our very eyes and they do all these performances on just coincidentally any any uh, police department in the world that's planning a drill on a certain day no matter where they're at all over the globe, will just magically pick the day to do the drill with live ammunition. And what happens? A real gun am uh, thing. Attack. <laughs> gun attack. I couldn't think of the fucking word. It's so ridiculous. Because, see, this TV has made all this uh, so normal to just go out and do something completely and totally insane against the enemy <laughs> it's always it's always against the enemy you know nobody just goes nuts in a shopping mall sometime and just takes out whoever's standing around fuck no 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 these are always a product of organized government and their agents because their agents are always magically there you know to be interviewed for the news and tell everybody what happened I always thought that was kind of strange. It goes back to 9-11, far as I can remember noticing it, that this building had just come down. I watched the fucking building fall. And in two minutes, they're getting this random guy on the street, and they're talking to him, and he's pitching the government story right, right on the street. Like, what? He already knew it, how it happened, who did it, why it happened, everything but the truth. And that story was repeated for, so far, what, 19, 18 years? And what do we do? We're good little sheep if the government tells us so. 
which way do I go, Mr. Government? Because uh, I think that the population really, no matter how fucking full of their self they act about being American, whatever the fuck that really is, America is the place that militarily goes into other countries. Uh, Grimm was reading a thing about it, and his number was 67 countries that the United States has been involved in some takeover of their government to replace them with somebody better that just happens to see things the way the American government would prefer they saw them. <laughs> what a coincidence! Financial business falls into your lap from the sky if you agree with the people with all the good weapons. Oh, boy. And they're still chattering along on the reallibertymedia.com while I break down society into little chunks for, you know, for it to be easier to go down with your coffee. <laughs> Take your news pill. Hey, I wonder when they're going to come out with that. You don't even have to turn the, in, the internet on. You just take a tablet, and there you go. There's your news. I think they call that LSD, right, Grim? <laughs> you know, I pushed for the Senate and the Congress and every other group of political thieves on the planet. I dare them to open their session of Congress in whatever fucking language they choose with a nice hookah. Smoke until the anger is gone, and then try to take advantage of the other guy. See what happens. I bet it don't work like that in the pot-smoking world, so why would it work like that if those thieves joined us instead of us trying to join them and fit into their bullshit games? It's all a bunch of crap any damn way. We're... We're all in debt. I'm in debt whether I work or whether I don't work. Well, then why work? That's kind of lame. Oh, you got to work to survive, don't you? No. <laughs> oh, only if that's all you know. It's just like if you don't know how to work on your own vehicle, right? Or if you did know how to work on your own vehicle, but you didn't have tools to do the job correctly with, then knowledge is useless without tools. Maybe that's what, because it sounds so, um, I guess, rude. It's not a very nice way to put something so important, because I clown around a lot on the radio and make jokes at every fucking thing. So, you know, maybe hearing me say that, Fixing the world, all it really requires is the proper tools to adjust what's wrong. And people bring up more problems instead of attacking the answer. Okay, this is what we need to do. Why the hell can't we just do it? Why is everything always based around money? <laughs> See, the con, the control that we're in it's by our, you know, with our consent. Oh, sure, I'll play this game because someday I might become a billionaire. You know, instead of just having a whole full, whole world full of millionaires, no, let's make 10% of the population. We'll give them 90% of the money and then we'll watch everybody else kill each other for what's left. <laughs> and when you talk about this out loud, <laughs> the eyes roll. It's like saying, hey, wait a minute. How do you know we're on a spinning globe, traveling through space and all this crap? You want to explain why water needs to be flat? <laughs> that right there just ends. That's it. This, then it's on. <laughs> the eyes roll. You don't know anything, you idiot. <laughs> And, and all I'm trying to really get across in the end is, it's funny to me because even if you're right, so what? <laughs> so you're right. You're the one that's caught in this illusion that being correct about something matters to anybody else. It, nobody gives a shit. <laughs> I am married to freaking Cirque. I love Cirque dearly. But 
I'll never tell her. Yeah, sure. I understand we're on a globe spinning through space and blah, 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 blah. No, I don't. I got questions. <laughs> and when my questions are just answered in theory, well, that's not an answer. That's a theory. Okay, so you got a great theory. <laughs> you know, Star Trek. <laughs> And the guy I would, I don't name, but I refer to, ink-stained, bald-headed, pompous ass, fucking know-it-all. But some of the stuff he says just knocks me off my pedestal. And I go, wow, I never thought of that. And that's what impresses me about other people. Now, I like a lot of people, and I don't like a few people. But the impressive people in life have been the ones that have thought of something that everybody else has been all explaining to me their whole life, my whole life, whatever life. And then this weirdo comes in and says, yeah, but hey, I thought of this, bitch. What do you think of this? And and I heard it and I went, whoa, I never thought of that. <laughs> I never, And I never did, but I was being directed into that way of thinking through people like Vinny and Larry Woods and Grimner and Rob Works, Don C, and the guys in the electric stuff, you know, that were chattering on the box. And I just sit here and read it because I didn't want to interrupt and I didn't have anything to tell them. I just wanted to know what they were talking about. And whether I learned much or not about detail and can recite it back to you, to me, that's not education. No, no, no. And, nah. What's education is when you look at something and you wake up and you go, wow, I was wrong about that. Hmm, what am I going to do now? That's, <laughs> that's impressive as fuck because I know how hard it is to lose. I've lost a lot of stuff in life, games and real things and fake things and whatnot. But to uh, like the blood pressure thing I remember I know how hard it must be for other people that have the high blood pressure game going on with them and then they hear some crazy guy like me telling you <laughs> nah you're you're being had by circumstances and a doctor that needs to make a boat payment and it's all legal see there's nothing illegal about what these guys are doing and that's the problem behind it <laughs> you're you're being led into rooms by liars and thieves using other people that have no idea what they're doing most of the time and i justify that with i've lived with people in the medical business and they pull 12 hour shifts they do work two days on and then they get three days off then they work three days then they get two days off and through the work situation, they're working 24 hours a day. So they get paid decent for what they do and all that. But it's, these are trauma people. But still, it that's the only part of medicine that they really have any knowledge about. They're, you ask them about pills and this and that, and they don't know anything. What? I don't know. You got to talk to the doctor about that. I just I just put bones back in and stitch people up and give them put them on this thing and that thing. But to get down to the Rockefeller shit, that's a different level, right? So what if really understand better now than I did at the time I was involved in it? Medicine is no different than any other business run anywhere. One office has no idea what the office over that across the hallway does. And nor do they care because they're busy with their own job. And somebody else above all these other people, their job is to keep all these people separate so they don't ever talk to each other about what they're doing and then make something with all the shit they create. Throw it together in a new formula and then make a patent. <laughs> Look what I discovered by mixing this and that together and that. And nobody else has ever done it because, well, I know. I hired the people to make those two things. And nobody had made those two things before. So there you go. And these experiments are so impressive to the educated, indoctrinated, 
government loving voting warmonger fucking taxpayer that they don't see the mess that we're in because we refuse to stand against progress it's not popular to challenge progress when you challenge progress they'll say well you're using the internet aren't you uh, well yeah but i'm not sitting over here fucking around trying to split atoms you know <laughs> whatever whatever this all this since it's just to me it is just nonsense if if they had taken all that time and energy they've put into destroying us and keeping us sick <laughs> keeping us dumb into the exact opposite we would be living in the future that people wrote about a hundred years ago. <laughs> we wouldn't have the want for anything. It would be a very good life. Now, saying that, I'm aware of life being bad more through seeing other people in shitty circumstances and uh, not wanting to be in that position, you know, um, it's a choice. If your life is shitty, it's because you're settling for shitty. Don't settle for shitty. Figure out what's wrong and change it. <laughs> it's not It's not that difficult to change something. And I think what's really hard is to, uh, to be upset about it and not learn that you're the one that's making whatever's happening in your day. That's you. <laughs> it ain't me. Hands don't piss me off. No, 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 no. Hans represents something politically that I despise. That's all. But personally, nah, could give two flying shits. Now, the people that I like, yeah, I give a flying shit to them. But only an electronic flying shit, not a real flying shit. <laughs> it, it's a, a shit of love as opposed to a shit of... Um, could give a shit <laughs> now hold on <clears throat> oh i've been around my sick wife and my throat was getting a little scratchy started to sound like grimner for a second there ah <laughs> uh, did i run in a, i ran out of shit to brag about or are you talking to vinnie no oh, vinnie will never run out of shit to brag about that man's accomplished rob he, but he wants to be recognized, so he's practicing on you for all the shit crap that you can throw at him. He Don't do anything to Vinny. No, no, that's his superpower. Vinny is invincible to words. Words do not harm him. You got to slap Vinny upside the head with a brick to get his attention to punch him in the nose. That's what you got with Vinny. <laughs> Vinny's, uh, Vinny's tough, <laughs> that old fucker. <laughs> I wouldn't want to mess with Vinny, huh? Isn't that right, Uncle Vinny? I'm just, I'm just kidding. But he, he's word wise. I mean that part. You can't get to Vincent with words. Oh, I mean, well, I did. But I think, I think that's the point. Is I saw him realize that. Oh no, no, no. These are just words on a screen. I'm reading what I want to see. And it's hard to remember that when you're the one being called a dumbass on the internet by somebody you don't care for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Flash says Grimner. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, so Vinny, in Vinny's defense, that he says that Rob represents the type of people I despise, and, okay, well, I see you and in, in him so similarly that I don't get it, you guys crack me up, I just figured you were doing this as a gag, but if it's real, okay, see what you like, man, I'd rather, uh, I'd rather see what I want than see what I'm told to see. <laughs> and I pay the, boy, I pay the price for holding on to my uh, personal belief, you know. Because in the end, I really have learned over everything. The only thing that I ever going to have in my life is what my mind believes. 
And if you don't believe things, then they're not real. To make something real, you have got to believe it. And if you don't believe it, then it's not real. Then you're wasting your fucking time. Go find something else to do. I, that I would say that's the lesson I've learned being married to Cirque for five years. And uh, because I come from such an unruly childhood and I was raised by a strict dictator that raised a monster he couldn't handle without beating it. So at some point he had to realize that he was the he made the mistake. I wasn't doing anything wrong at all. He was the parental unit <laughs> and I think at about 12 13 just before I turned 13 I think it finally fucking dawned on him that he was doing something that was making me not want to live with him <laughs> so as uh, so time kind of works itself out and, and he stopped and then I stopped running away from home and that was that till I was a little older and and we came nose to nose and he gave me a choice he didn't do the violence thing but i told him if you ever hit me again i ain't gonna take it <laughs> so you figure it out and uh anyway so he threw me out he, you don't like it here pack your shit and leave 16 years old so i did i packed my truck and i rolled <laughs> but that that's the kind of life that I thought everybody lived crazy like I did, but no, nah, I grew up and found out some people don't. Some people um, have parents that split up and they get along better with their parents that way than I got along living with mine the way they were. So, I don't know. Interpretation, see? Because when you hear a story, the only information you have to understand that story is your own experience. So, hmm. The control games are on, man. Everybody's trying to figure out who are you trying to control. <laughs> me? I'm just trying to control me. And I'll back that up with a little story that my mama used to tell me and, and try to embarrass me in front of my friends when I became a teenager. But the story was... When I was three, three and a half, somewhere in there, the neighbor, we lived in a small house with a cottage in the back, and the cottage had an older gentleman, <laughs> and he was hard of hearing. And I overheard my parents, my dad says, that old man played his radio again, woke me up, and blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> so I took it upon myself to go back there and defend my daddy against this old man. And by the time my mom realized I'd escaped her and gone off and she figured out where I could be, and I'm yelling at this old man about not playing his radio in the morning so loud, you're waking my dad up. And then she ends it with, well, he didn't ever play the radio early in the morning after that again. <laughs> so, see, I started out an aggressive fighter protector <laughs> but I never grew tall enough to into the suit to fit it's kind of funny but uh, here we sit you know all these years later and I look back and and all the the life events that other people complain about don't bother me a bit fractional reserve banking could give two shits I know how the black market works I know how to trade things. Money sometimes is more of a hindrance than anything. Because what do you do with cash when you have it? Or checks. Or take it to a bank. Hmm. Well, there must be better ways to live than that. <laughs> but the government doesn't know how to tax free. <laughs> so, Did you know that in Florida, there was a guy... <laughs> For example, giving free haircuts to the homeless. And the government put a stop to it. Now, where does the freedom part come in? And who are the controlling and why? You know, If you want to do something for total strangers on your time off of your responsibility, 
Why would it be the government's business what you do or who you do it for? But somehow we've managed to get ourselves into this overlord position with these fucking governments. And they take advantage of every bit of it, too. You know, some use rope like Denmark and some use barbed wire like America or England. But they tell you in America or England how free you are. Well, you ain't no free. You ain't no freer than I am. And at least I gave up my freedom by choice. I didn't get tricked out of it or robbed of it. I knew what I was doing when I got married. I mean, I mean, you don't get married to be free. <laughs> if, you, if you're getting married to be free, you're doing something wrong. Back up. <laughs> Drop that ball, son. You have no chance. <laughs> Give up now. Okay. That was that was fun. I was enjoying that. Oh, I don't know. Assange, somebody's still. They're going on about Assange. Uh, big deal. What big what big changes come from anything that anybody fucking does? <laughs> Takes a lot of years for the result of these great big actions to actually grab hold and and start producing a result. You know, they're just words, and if you don't believe them, hmm, how could they possibly be real if you don't believe they're real? So there must be a shitload of people out there in the real world, the voter world, uh, the 9 to 5 world where people are scratching for that 7% because it's so important to have a BMW and five bedrooms and all that kind of crap. But then again, maybe it ain't. What would be important? Uh oh, there's my phone telling me I'm letting it die. <laughs> Every see, we're so connected in life now, because uh, I use my phone to talk to Cirque sometimes, but I forget to charge it, and then I I can't talk to Cirque because of it. So I need to get control of my lack of appreciation for how things should work sometimes. You know. Being an anarchist does not in any way mean there aren't rules. All it means is I'm against rulers. You don't rule me. Who the fuck do you think you are? I'm sitting here. I'm looking at my wife and my dog's over there laying on the on the couch. But I, you know what I don't see in the room here? I don't see any fucking ruler. Hmm. Now, what would that mean to a simple-minded fella like me? If I don't see it, well, it ain't there. <laughs> How much more difficult could... Can I make it any more difficult for somebody else to understand? Because I don't know what you see. I only know what I read about what you see. And some of the things that get other people's attention makes me laugh. Wow. Assange. Okay. Who... Who is he? If he walked into your freaking living room, would you know him? <laughs> I mean, what would you know about him? Oh, isn't he the guy that gave up a bunch of top secret papers and blah, blah, blah? How do you know that this wasn't all planned to be done just the way it's being done? That's what I expect out of this government, is whatever we collectively see... The way that it's explained to us tells us what we're seeing. And the government is always going to be there to tell you what it is you're looking at. So you don't, you know, make an idiot out of yourself doubting that the fucking government's telling you the goddamn truth for a change. I mean, look at their history, for fuck's sake. Yeah. Doesn't take a lot. Eh, but you don't live here. You don't have any right to complain anymore. <laughs> I've heard it all. <laughs> but I would, uh, I would agree with that if I hadn't had so much time invested into it. It's like, uh, like a child in a way. You know, you, you grow beyond the necessity of daily companionship, and they change. They become their own person. There you go. Well, so does the so does the place you live. Things change. And to allow that change to absorb you, 
That has got to take, well, look at what Woody did. When Woody didn't like the way that Washington State was dealing with him, he found a different place to go. (laughs) I think what he ended up with, though, was liberal light. He started out in liberal hell, and then he moved to liberal light. But from what I've seen of uh, the pics of his place and whatnot, he's not He's got space, his privacy, he can do whatever he fucking wants, not surrounded by people in the where he's at. So that's got to be a better deal in the long run. But politically, nah, I don't see the difference. One state, state's a state. I mean, hell, if Israel was a state, we wouldn't have all this fucking problem we're having. I think, still think that maybe the, uh, what's his name, Trump, he should just trade them Oklahoma for Israel. Just move everybody that's in Oklahoma to Israel. And move everybody in Israel to Oklahoma. And just build a big fucking wall around it. Cameras from every angle and put it on fucking pay-per-view. Make some money off these people. <laughs> Turn the tables on them. And let them do their banking within the confines of their little state. And leave the rest of us to fuck alone. These Zionists that claim they're Jews. <laughs> it's, well, I guess it took a lot of uh, listening to other people's outside of the box input to how these groups became what they became over the, the years and what they are now, what they really be, represent, as opposed to what they tell us that they re- represent, because there's no way to tell you the truth about 9-11 if you're uh, if you hate the Muslims because of all the shit they do to us <laughs> Americans <laughs> well then 9-11 was done by the towel heads no I don't think so I think 9-11 was done by the Jews and the USA working hand in hand probably a few other countries were involved in it too because when uh, when they looked at the stock exchange transaction of that day, <laughs> there's ways to bet against a company's stock. You bet that it's going to be low. And if you call that, you get paid off. <laughs> so guess, guess which airline that day was predicted to take a shit <laughs> and did <laughs> and paid off handsomely, by the way, <laughs> to all you fiat currency investors out there but that's the basis of what you have to be a part of to produce a profit in this warmonger shit loving world that we share (laughs) these people are nuts man trillion six i think grim was reading i think six trillion dollars in the war against terror right but it's America's the one that's got no freedom. <laughs> it ain't anybody else that's living that harshly with all the, you know, 100 miles of constitution-free zone that you enjoy today thanks to the Jews and the Americans working hand-in-hand to bring you 911 <laughs> to strip you of your freedom but blame somebody else for it. That's what's happened. I don't know, probably going to get shot cuz I talk about it, I guess. I don't I don't really give a fuck anymore, but the control games have put people into positions of you defend the American government no matter how stupid you look doing it. You know, and I've heard them say all kinds of completely ignorant things like Oh, the plane exploded on the whatever floor and the jet fuel melted the steel. Okay, well, according to the information I read, jet fuel doesn't burn hot enough to melt steel, so it will cave. (laughs) What? The fuel would burn up immediately. It would be a quick. It wouldn't burn on and on and on. That's, That's a little exaggerated. Well, maybe the building would some, but not in a hot seat. The heat is never going to hit what it needs to melt. And they built it that way on purpose to withstand the impact of the plane that supposedly went through the freaking steel. And I don't know how how you go through steel with aluminum. 
<laughs> no, no, that that's a bomb, people. No, somebody took that building down the way it fell. And then the second one, same thing. And then even for, you know, just to make you a real believer in the official story, <laughs> the 47-story building. <laughs> one, two, three, just like a plant. Just like, wow, do you think this was planned? No, this is an act of terrorism by terrorists. See the passports that survived? <laughs> Everything else burnt this and melted that, but passports survived. <laughs> oh, wow. Then the, the job they did at the Pentagon. No, not even a plain body. Just, what? Oh, and then all the videotapes available were just missing, no, confiscated. I think the FBI took them. Took them. Said, wait, we ain't going to let you see him for reasons of national, what is that damn crap they call it? National defense or some nonsense. National. Well, so what I guess I've learned over the last 40 or so years since I was a young fella is that, wow, whatever these people want me to do in the end always works against me no matter what it is. So, hmm, what can I do about all that? And my answer was pretty much like everybody else, nothing. There's two worlds, and take a choice. And uh, the paper world just didn't suit me. Well, hmm, I don't know. Uh, kind of drew a blank on that. I just thought, wow, yeah. How do you ever explain just believing the outside long shot over the uh, the real story everybody else was telling because as I was growing up, I looked around. I didn't see all these great things that everybody else was talking about. I was watching shit disintegrate because in 1968, there was a fucking Mustang. Oh, it's a pretty car. 1967, same. Go back, 64 to... But they had this in 68. They had a really nice body style I was just in love with that body style then when I'm growing up I'm starting to notice cars are getting uglier prices for the same car last year they're higher now why why is it going up go to the grocery store hey I used to come in here with a quarter now I need 50 cents come on you guys and they chipped at us a little at a little at a little like like a quarter here you know uh an extra 30 cents there two three years later and and then in over a 20 year period what cost you 30 cents in uh, the 60s you paying seven and eight dollars for it today <laughs> and the same fucking thing why <clears throat> well because of inflation and da, da, da. well because we borrow the fucking money from a central bank like a bunch of monkeys. It's If you approached a, another man uh, and as a business deal, hey, you know what? I'm going to sell you your this, and I'm going to charge. You can make it yourself, but no, no, I'll do it for you, and I'm going to charge you for making it for you. Why would anybody in their right mind agree to that? Because... At that level of finance, it's not like the guys making the decisions are doing the fucking labor. They're the cheesy, you know, grits that sit around in their lazy asses directing. Oh, I own stuff. I'm important. Do what I tell you. I have to go golf. <laughs> that's, that's the kind of shit we've been conned into is the people that do the fucking work get no respect. They get no fucking money. And then they get... They don't even get recognized for what they do. The big shot that doesn't do fuck all gets all the everything and the money. <laughs> and the money ain't even fucking real. So I think the joke's really on us. And if you really cared enough to do something about it, it would be probably something similar to not supporting the fucking beast in any possible way you could find to do it. And there's a lot of ways to do it. I think we all try. I don't know. 
I don't know if it's something that you would want to type on the uh, on the chat room about what you might do, but it's good for radio. So let other people know that might not think about things in this light. You know, hey, so so if I didn't buy Coke for a day, who's gonna notice? Well, I'll tell you, if a million people didn't buy Coke for a day, Coke would notice that because they love they profits. This whole fucking thing. Every year, these rich people need to make more money than they made the year before. That's their game. And they even have ways to lose money so that it uh, makes their tax situation more comfortable to manipulate. Because <laughs> rich people, their whole game is to not pay taxes. Poor people... They don't pay taxes at all. They don't even freaking get it. They don't earn enough money to pay taxes. So what the government does is they play these little chicken shit nickel and dime games and they withhold. <laughs> and then at the end of the year, you get to play this little numbers game with a tax auditor and get a refund check from the government. <laughs> it's a... It's a <laughs> If you did that in a business, uh, would that make any sense? Let's take the profits from the business and we'll give it back to the people that spent it. <laughs> no, 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 you're not. You're being hustled one more time. That is what I call creative accounting because no cash ever, ever exchanges hands. Everybody ends up with a check you gotta go to the federal reserve bank little establishment in your neighborhood to redeem your certificate for fiat currency so in the end they own the check and they own the cash so what do you got you got the right to pass these ious around in the hopes that the government doesn't collapse a dollar and make everybody starve to death. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that the way it would go, honey? <laughs> okay, I got a sure out of baby over there. I think she's playing games on the internet thing and doesn't even pay attention to me tonight. Hmm. Anyway. <sighs> so, what would we do? How would we live any differently in this technological age than the way that it's playing out because wow the the more i see the more electronic everybody is gone hold on one second mm. anyway so yeah little kids i was going to the grocery store a couple days ago and out here in denmark uh it's no crime to leave your children in the cart. You know, they got this bicycle with cart in front that they drive, and it's got enough room for two full, you know, four or five-year-old kids to sit comfortably and have a little game to play with. So when I'm going into the store, that's what I see out in front of the store. And there's no driving or any of these kids are against a wall. Everybody is going in and out the store, passing them by. But this is Denmark, and it's not a crime here. To You haven't abandoned your children if you left them in the outside with a game to play while you go in and do the grocery shopping. And to me, that's how civilized it still is. It may not be so friendly in uh, Copenhagen right now because it's so big, but I don't know. I, I remember when me and Cirque would go get coffee, uh, the girls would be out and have coffee and leave the baby in the carriage outside the glass window and sit inside and have coffee. So, yeah, I think it was, but that was like four, oh my God, four years ago when I was in Copenhagen. Uh, I'm going to have to be like a banker and start adding zeros to my memories so I can have more expensive memories. Hmm. Anyway. Whoa, 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 whoa. I know I was complaining about the the fractional reserve banking practices that we use that people don't seem to be aware that we use. And if they were aware that we use them, 
What would they do about it? I don't think much would change. Never seems to raise a stir, you know, because on the the currency it would it said in for debts public and private. But if you take cash to Bank of America to pay your mortgage, they're going to put you on the road and tell you to hit the bricks. No, no, no. We don't accept cash for that payment. No, no, no. And uh, what they don't explain on the video that I saw regarding it was the currency is not the same accounting as the way they handle the uh, mortgage credits. They're credits. They're not currency. So it's a different accounting system somehow. Now, in fiat banking, that means something. <clears throat> to the rest of us, what could that mean besides bait and switch? <laughs> well, if you act now, we'll not, we'll throw in an extra <laughs> because we've only got two left. <laughs> yeah, 2,000. <laughs> and you're going to take two of them home with you because I'm going to sell them to you, baby. That's what I do. <laughs> and that's what we live with being pitched pitched shit by sleazy greasy freaking lion pricks and the percentage of the fucking public sucks it up like it's good oh mr trump you are so wonderful oh i love you very much while the motherfuckers over there sucking that jew cock Right on. I mean, with the Yamaha and the whole freaking Jew bullshit game, because he's a Zionist pretending to support the Jews to get that that held hostage support. Because if you're not for the Jews, then you're for the Arabs. <laughs> and look at what they did to us on 9/11. <laughs> Oldest game in the world. Research every fucking war for the last, I don't know, thousand, two thousand years. <laughs> you know what's a common denominator in war? <laughs> Lies and deception. What do you think? People are all honest and stand up and shit and they go out in there and they're killing each other, you morons. It's not a fucking party. It's not something to be uh, proud of. How insane do you have to be to feel good that the dirt you're from, the people that run it, make their profits killing other people and stealing their freaking wealth right before your goddamn eyes and tell you, they fucking tell you. I saw that bitch Hillary say it on, on the internet. He, uh, we saw, we came, he died. They had no reason to kill Gaddafi. None at all. But Israel did, because he openly said, I am the enemy of Israel. Well, sport, when you pick on the Jews, Israel, <laughs> guess who you just asked to shove your parts in other parts? Yeah, I know. The USA. Because where the Jew goes, USA is always close to uh, do the dirty work for some reason. I don't get it. And then can't even get a damn... Um, <laughs> can't find a senator that doesn't have dual citizenship these days. Or, wait a minute. Hmm. Didn't they hire... Or not hire, but they got a, a selection and they put a little Arab girl in there, like three of them. So now they got, <laughs> this is priceless. So now they got three Arabs in the U.S. Congress. Does anybody wonder how that happened? <laughs> oh, yeah, they were voted into office. <laughs> right, that, huh? Because that's how that works. Because. You remember, you know, you've got two choices. The people that they told you you can choose from. Get it? The people they told you you could choose from. So they pick those two people. And you get to choose which one of the two people they picked <laughs> that you like. <laughs> so, so I guess they've got places now that are 
predominantly what what would you call it insane and the voting public is they're predictable i mean come on human beings have been reduced to scratches on a clipboard and little glitches on a screen we're little numbers dots and zeros there's very little humanity left. If you want humanity, you're not going to find it in an overcrowded, overpopulated, malnourished soup bowl. <laughs> that's what the city's turned into. Well, that's the way I see this shit. Everything's all fucked up. I mean, here we are, 20 fucking 19, and they can't run a fucking train in Denmark. Go figure. Why? Because the people that work on the trains wanted to strike. No, and I'm doing something, baby. And the the uh, people didn't want them to, but they did. And in any in any machine, when you have something disrupted like that, where they stopped trains and they threw everybody off their schedule, and it was all chaos. <laughs> then when they try to get it back in order again. <laughs> It takes a little bit of work because you jacked up so many other things. <laughs> it's that ripple, you know. You, you don't think much of it, but I, when you throw a rock in water that fish live in, I wonder what the fish think. I bet they go, hey, there's that guy who throws the stones at us. <laughs> hey, good to see you, man. <laughs> now nah, they're probably like, how oh, how to get the fuck out of here? There's It's raining stones. <laughs> who knows? Maybe fish don't think. Maybe we need more fish. <laughs> we got too many thinkers, people that know stuff. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, for all the people out there in the real world that know stuff, when I know stuff, I'm probably at my most self-destructive. At that point in time, I'm a dangerous man because I would be telling you I know stuff. Well, isn't that just fucking wonderful that I know stuff? And here's the good part about it. If I'm telling you a story that you yourself are unfamiliar with, I'm not telling you anything. You're probably going, hey, what the fuck is this guy talking about? I never heard anything like this before. <laughs> because the truth will set you free, Bosco and Bosquette. I guarantee. Mm -hmm. I defy anybody to tell me or type to me how well this works because the people in seats of decision are full of shit right up to their fucking necks. We all know it. We all justify it somehow or another because they still do it. There's no group standing up saying, you know, these pieces of shit need to go. This is enough. I've had enough. No, we don't do that. We just adjust to the barbed wire or the rope that the powers that be fine gives. You know what I mean? They go, hey, we're going to control you. Now, this is the way it's going to go. Or you can go to jail. <laughs> and that's that's it. And how I mean that, of course, is you pay your taxes, your fair share to society, or you go to prison. And isn't it weird that the very money they're punishing you for not giving them, they're taking from somebody else to support you for not giving them the money they wanted? <laughs> What? That's got to make sense to a voter somehow. People that have, you know, my best interest at heart, those are the voters. They're the ones that care about me. And I know that because they've got the fucking military of military. And they're trying to figure out ways to make it easier to kill more people at a uh, less investment. You know, the less invested into this, the better. Well, the price of the technology was for other things that, you know, the military can hijack and use. Wow. How big of this military does it need to get? How much bigger does it need to get before people start to realize, whoa, this is, wow, it's so far out of control. 
that if you don't stop it now, soon it's going to be controlling you. Wait a minute. Maybe we've already been there. <laughs> I don't know. I Hold on a second. I haven't been pulled over drunk driving by the county sheriff lately, so I don't really have much to say in that department. I wonder if anybody on the reallibertymedia.com has a police horror tale for us. <laughs> I know Rob Works and Grimner are very unhappy with the police. I will... I will openly say that right to their face. Yeah, you guys don't seem too pleased with the popo. Hmm. I ascertain that perspective from the links and the text in which you present your side of the police. <laughs> yeah, I'm just giving you guys a hard time. But, yeah, what's there to... Oh, wow. What do you call them? jack-booted thugs because they want to put their boot on your throat and stand on you. Why would anybody in their right mind want to do a thing like that? See, when when I said that uh, I don't have any respect at all for a man or woman that earns their living threatening people with a gun. Whoa, that set a few people back a little bit. And I guess I could understand why, but I'm going to stand my ground with a gun. And if I die by a gun, I'll be surprised. But a gun's a pussy's weapon. I mean, why else would you kill me with a gun? I'm five foot four, I weigh 135 pounds. Back up. <laughs> I could do something crazy. <laughs> you better get a gun. Okay, so, you know, holding that thought. But, I don't know. My other answer to the gun problem is just arm everybody to the fucking teeth. And then, like, what? But take it to what Chris Rock said. Make the bullets cost, like, $5,000. You know, think people think twice about shooting their self or anybody else. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. It's going to cost me. What if I miss? <laughs> yeah, think about that. You have to be a. And how do you practice at $5,000 a bullet? <laughs> well, ask Bill Gates. <laughs> I, <laughs> ah, Rob, I'm, the text just caught up to me on the radio now. Yeah. I mean, because I'm um, delayed to you. But yeah, co well, see, that's the duality side of it. The cops are evil. I, I don't know. I've taken it a step further and gone beyond evil, in my opinion. And I've gone with... There's got to be like a personality test, psychological test, that these fuckers have to fail to qualify to be whatever cops have become. Because what I've seen on the internet so far, yeah, even Grim, fuck the police. But what I've seen over the years is the, the expressions of control behind the guys with the guns and badges and... It's not pretty to watch. These people are out of control. They've, you have nothing left except cameras to uh, protect you against being locked up now. Because I don't think most of them know what the laws are. They just arrest people and fill in the paperwork when they're in jail. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I mean, and look at all the crime they would stop if they just... Did away with the currency altogether. You wouldn't even have anybody panhandling anymore. What would you give them? Oh, you have to give them bread. Bread and wine. Hey, that might be a good way to go. Hey, you want to live in a cashless society with me, Circle? Oh, Cirque said no. Okay. I'll be living in my cashless society all by myself. Hey, wait a minute. I've done that. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> Whoops, I got married. I can't do it. But I have done that in the past. Lived outside the currency exchange thing. And a lot of the time it was because the people I wanted to buy stuff from didn't want cash. It, was, it wasn't as valuable to them as other things. And I made trades like for... Yeah, electrical upgrades. <laughs> I had a house I was living in. 
and they had uh, old fuse boxes, wanted to upgrade the breaker. I said, well, okay, let me see who I can find that will be interested in trading for that. And I did. I traded the electrician something that they thought was more valuable than the work they were doing. And everybody was happy. And the electricity was upgraded. Ta-da! And we managed to do all this without government approval. Isn't that strange? I wonder what ever became of that. Because I'll see it in a bit. Because whenever you have upgrades to your property, all this stuff has got to be documented somewhere by some bean counter so they can upgrade the tax code. And, you know, <laughs> charge you a higher percentage for your property tax because that's another way these crooks make a shit ton of money off us. Property tax. You've been buying this property. You paid off your mortgage. Guess what? <laughs> you got property tax or the bank will come in here and take it away from you well the cops will cops will throw you off and they'll be armed and that's the game we play I play it here but I don't play it uh, Cirque plays it my end of it is to not let this thing fall apart which is what I do <laughs> isn't that difficult to be uh, nice to people so that they want you to be where you're at instead of expecting you and demanding of you what you do or don't do. Uh, I found a whole nicer world when I did what I did because I wanted to be where I was. And here's where I'm at. <laughs> what a wonderful life. Anyway, the control games tonight just kind of fell apart. Don't know. I never did get a grip on it, but I did my little bitching bit about the Federal Reserve Bank. I could throw in the line about how we're traded as chattel on the stock exchange through our birth certificates. And the proof to that is get an original of your birth certificate not the copy or get a copy of your birth record I would recommend that I've never pursued it because I've already done the passport stuff blah, blah. I'm already where I'm at so I'm done but if I was gonna go anywhere else the next step I would take for self-preservation my you know of my straw man I want to protect my straw man so I don't end up in shit I don't want to be in and one big thing I was told that would be helpful would be an original copy of my birth record not my birth certificate because that's what the certificate is <laughs> it's a birth certificate <laughs> now the birth record ah, that's a different piece of paper you might want to check into that just, just the way they said it to me made all the sense in the world and here I am in Denmark and and all this knowledge I've acquired since I left the North Carolina can't use none of it I've been away from home so long that <laughs> none, nothing applies to me anymore I'm in a world on my own you know and the, the lack of the Danish crap doesn't even bother any people are so used to me here they just talk to me in English <laughs> it's, it's funny now, the Rockhound guy was going over there to get Cirque some yarn the other day, and, and he's just so used to seeing me now. Hey, how you doing? Good. What What's the wife need? <laughs> and uh, they're so good. They, they get the stuff for me instead of me. They know the stuff uh, inside out. So they just, okay, I'll match those colors. Give me a minute. And, chick, 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 chick. and then there I go, but. In the beginning, it was like, wow, what am I doing? And just like anything else, I've told you guys, if, I've, if I'm exposed to it enough where I get into a routine with it, and I know what I'm doing, then I can do it. And communicating verbally through these things, uh, that that's incidental. That really doesn't mean a whole fucking lot. You might think it does, but nah... I, I ran into a guy named Hans in the bar. I remember the 
bringing it up before, but uh, I'm going to say it on tonight because his personality is so warm and loving that uh, the bartender had, has to get rid of him because he's got my belief system, but he's got uh, no clutch. He doesn't know how to converse about it without being argumentative and contrary. But with me, I pretty much agreed with what he had to say, so he he was calm and understanding. But when he was talking to people later on the even, in the evening that didn't agree with him so much, his demeanor shifted. Hmm, I wonder what that's about. Because uh, oddly enough, I have uh, there's a teacher that goes there. Name, her name's Ketcha, and we disagree violently verbally i mean not yelling but just opposite polar opposite of she is very liberal and i am very more conservative in some areas where she's not <laughs> strikes you as strange because i think that trump should open his fucking day with a hookah so i'm not against weed <laughs> i think going to the doctor is the last act of a desperate fool. Uh, let's see what else. <laughs> I got a lot of shitty ideas here. But these ideas that I carry now are from understanding years of the truth being shown to me through video and physical links and people talking and in ways I could understand. People like Larry Woods or Dr. Daniels, or that other one, Dr. John Bergman. I heard Mary pushing him the other night. I think it was today. I listened to her show from last night, or yeah, Wednesday night. And Miss Mary was saying there is a new guy I would recommend, and his name is Dr. John Bergman. And, that, and he's on BitChute, and he's on YouTube. And we still got YouTube and BitChute, so let's use them for what we can use them for. There's still a lot of stuff they haven't pulled yet. So, oh man, I don't know. Ten years from now, the things we're talking about today will probably not, nobody will be interested anymore. The world will be, get beyond all this. They're going to weed certain things out of the population through schools like they've done so far. Uh, <coughs> I grew up in the back seat of a car. Not strapped into it into some baby carriage crap. Car seat. What do they call Yeah, the car seat. Fucking joke. But then again, we had bigger cars that had plenty of room. And uh, your parents didn't act like fools driving the car, yelling at people and causing trouble. And they, So you being in the back seat was incidental, you know. And if you got into an accident in these old cars, it was nothing. Those speeds, you weren't gonna hurt anybody. Might get a little damage to a body part or something, maybe a broken window. But nah, I don't really. I don't think that the times then compare to the times now in any possible way, except to look at it today is negative compared to where we were, and where we were was the beginning of negative. We were coming out of a long-term uh, control from the government and the churches and all this other shit that made like made things like hemp and weed illegal. Those two things, that was... And then they worked their way up, like Grimm was reading last night, or Monday night, about colloidal silver. They made that an enemy. Anything the fucking Fed tells you is good for you is garbage. And then anything they tell you is garbage is good. So we've got the complete opposite of what we're looking at, whatever that may be. So if you look at the government and you see it as a positive entity that is producing wonderful things, well, then you're a moron. That's what I think. But not a lot of people carry that opinion. Uh, following the sheep. Well, let's see. Let's make fun of following sheep and then go out and vote for Donald Trump or Hillary or Obama or 
whoever the fuck it is, it's all this, it's, to me, it's all the same crap. You've got a group of people presenting you with two complete numb nut fucking wastes of life. And they're telling you, pick between these two people. They're going to be in charge. No, I, I don't like either of them, your ownershipness, sir. Shut up. Those are your choices. If you don't like it, don't vote. <laughs> and then when you don't vote, then the dorks that fucking vote, you know what they do? They make fun of you for not voting and tell you that, wait a minute, you have no right to complain. You did not vote. Well, then you try to explain to these morons, I didn't like either of the candidates. There was nobody to choose from. They don't understand that. They see that as a choice. This forced fucking shit stuffed down your throat with a, with a nice bow tie. It's crap. Man. But, you know, they they wash it and they send it out to play golf and wave at cameras and get on helicopters. and It does all these incredible stunts. It's really an amazing thing. The great big orange head. Man, that man can board a motherfucking plane like nobody. I never saw anybody get do a better job of getting on a plane than Donald Trump. <laughs> the problem is the prick keeps coming back. Why? <laughs> Why don't they keep him? Somebody, somebody must want Donald. Besides Washington D.C. <laughs> No. Where does the guy, does he live in the White House or does he live in New York? Or does anybody care? And besides, he's got a helicopter. So what would it matter? He can fly back and forth in a pittance of time from one building to the other. But I think that's the appealing part about this loser that we call POTUS Trump is that he's got so much money. Oh, my God. Does anybody ever take a minute, just one minute, to think about the wealthiest companies on the planet and what those companies manufacture? That would be an interesting uh, trip through... Uh, interland wouldn't it the interwebs would keep you jumping oh uh, oh okay sorry grim i got it confused I, i'm smoking <laughs> when i do the marijuana cigarette at the show i get a little forgetful about who said what but grim says nay swine hunt <laughs> no he didn't he said flash that was graham z reading about colloidal silver last night not me on monday <laughs> well you and mary sound so much alike <laughs> i confused you i'm just joking now, actually uh your taste in links in is um uh, and hers or <laughs> she finds some oddball shit you would avoid but the stuff that you guys agree on is it's it's memorable it's just i can't remember which one of you boneheads <laughs> were the ones that read it <laughs> it's not your fault <laughs> it's mine and that's the that's just the torch i have to carry to be me is I don't spend a lot of attention on certain types of details. They just bore the shit out of me, so I don't even bother to notice. I've learned how to just avoid things in my old age. <laughs> my old age. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm coming up. I'm going to be hitting another birthday in September, people. And remember, I like blue gold and diamonds. So when my birthday rolls around, dig deep and send everything to Grimnir at thereallibertymedia.com <laughs> because I'm not doing this because I need anything from anyone. I do this because I'm having a giggle and I'm trying to tell you how I see things and maybe there's some people that might agree with it. And if you don't, hey, I understand. Believe me, I lived around more people that didn't agree with me in all these years than I ever have that did. But, the beauty of the whole thing is my wife agrees with me. So the foundation is strong in the Flash somebody household, my friends. 
because we have come to the common ground and said, hey, I don't give a shit, do you? <laughs> no. Oh, okay, good. There you go. Now, not giving a shit is way different than not doing anything. See, <laughs> people, people have to understand there's words and then there's actions. And sometimes words are a representation of an action. And sometimes words are just words. We're just jibber-jabbering and they don't mean anything unless you want them to. That's what I'm saying. I don't know how anybody out there could understand every idea I have and agree with everything I believe. And What? That would be insane. Complete insane for me to think that about the outside world. Come on. So, no, no, no. I realize I'm on a fringe. But the fringe I'm on has produced a really good... Uh, foundation of people to associate with in the electronic world that <laughs> it's not a problem it was like uh, when Grimm was talking about what was it um, Amazon is getting all fucking full of their self and they're they're bending to somebody and they pulled all the anti-vax information off the bookshelves they're not gonna allow that to happen but he says, but when you use Amazon, don't forget to click onto the Grimner button, something, something. I'm not sure how that works, because I don't, I don't use it. <laughs> See, I boycott all the good stuff, and I live real easy. So I don't, I'm not looking for all that instant potato peeler stuff. No, I eat the potato peel. I get pissed off when people, hey, what are you going to, no, 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 no. There's vitamins and minerals in those things. And if you cook them right, they taste good. So, no, you just got to adjust your culinary uh, knowledge to suit the food you're putting in your body and figure out what's the best way to take that food in. And people like Java Doctor, I don't know if Java's in the room tonight. I read a lot of names. Okay. He says he's here. I don't know if Java's here, but he had knee replacement. And I would I want to take a moment. I don't know if I type this to you in any way you can understand it. So I'm going to take a minute to uh, pick on Java Doctor who had his knee replacement and suggest to you that you check into. Take a teaspoon of rose hip once a day and you can scatter it in your damn oatmeal or drink it in a little bit of water just stir it up and then shoot it like a shot of whiskey now it's not the tastiest little remedy but i have uh, arthritis okay so i've had it for years and in the states i was starting a few you know, years ago about i don't know not too many but 10 or so anyway so when I got here, I found out about rose hip. It's a it's a ground up powder, and it's affordable. And I use a teaspoon of it every morning. And it's not lovely to to do it the way I do it. But my uh, my bones and my cartilage have they've not. I can't claim that they've repaired their self. But I was starting to have. Uh, an ache in a hip when I was walking about three years ago, I think it was. My, yeah, it might have been three. And I was starting to notice, hey, wait a minute. So I told Cirque about, hey, I'm starting to have aches from walking. What the fuck do we do? And she came up with rose hip, and it worked for me. So I would suggest to um, Java Doctor that while you're in convalescence and you're doing all that exercising, Rose hip might be something to uh, look into to see if it would help you in your recovery process. And then when you have the other one done, you already have a built up in your system because it's not immediate. It takes a little while before it starts to actually show a physical result depending on how much damage you've done to yourself. Because I've got it in my hands, my fingers, but I can squeeze both hands equally, and it's not painful to do that. I can walk 
and it's not painful to do that, but it was starting to be there. You know, it was happening to me. So I thought I'd pitch my buddy Java Doctor the rose hip remedy for arthritic problems in life. And I would consider having a knee you know, replacement fall into that category because it's part of your joints and all that. And that's what this particular herb does is it it attaches somehow to the to the existing problem and it repairs it i it's worked for me i would just say check into it and if it works for you yay there you go and but i don't think he heard me because uh i didn't see nothing on the chitter chatter but he might be logged in so somebody else can mention it to him if he didn't catch the show that would be cool or i'll ask him myself but i think i've mentioned it to him before and i just thought hey you know what there's lots of folk out there that have arthritis that don't know there's um, remedy to these things you can add stuff to your diet that over a period of time will help repair the damage done because your body does not replenish cartilage that's one of the things that i think that's true i believe that's true because the end result we all end up in the same irritated ah that hurts to move my finger like that um, Vinny complains about it all the time i've told him but you know how mr Vinny is Vinny's going to do what Vinny's going to do now java is a little bit he's probably more in an interested to listen to answers mood because he's just recently had the surgery <laughs> the moon is anti-semitic says grim <laughs> uh, well the won't get a the jews won't get a moon base oh yeah does this do you guys share my distaste for israel yeah, no, being Jewish doesn't help anything. But I don't think the Israelis are Jewish. I don't think I'm Jewish. I think that the people that think they are aren't. And they've just been tricked into believing it. But, wow, what a game. And then there's, diff like, every other religion, there's this faction of that, and this factor, and this layer and that level nah these are freaking games we're being fucked because if you tell somebody the truth you ever notice you don't have to tell them four different versions of the truth <laughs> you know i mean i i don't consider myself like a victim of car accidents because i wrecked a bike when i was 14 a motorcycle a little 110 it was nothing but the damage it did to me as a result of flying off the handlebar, over the handlebars, and hitting the ground was a little bit. But uh, I was in a helmet, and I was in good clothes for the beating. I had good boots on, and da 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 da, da. And it was a smaller bike. So I've said I've never had any real major, and it wasn't major enough to take me to the hospital. So, no. Nah. But sometimes I just completely forget that ever happened because uh, I didn't have any fault in it. I was the one that got hit. But eh, blah, 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 blah. And back to, it's all a matter of my experience compared to what somebody else is telling me about their experience. And that's what we do, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Deep down inside, there I'm a Jewy bastard that wants to take all your money. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I don't want anything from anyone. Be honest with you. I tell you, I'm going to do it every show, too. If you ever want to send money to support the show, send it to Grimner, not to me. Send it to Real Liberty Media and help support the site. That would be the best thing that anybody could do that does appreciate the shit that I do on the radio. Not send it to me, because I don't, I, for one, I don't need it. I'm good. But the other one is, uh, wow, Grimner's the one that's running all this stuff. and <laughs> He's the poor fucker that gets saddled helping us when we come into our, uh, I don't know how this works, Grim, can you help me? 
And he always does. If he's available to help, he does. So that's why I say, you poor fucker, you always get stuck doing it. And it, like the last show, I did my notes while I was doing the show. So I had the notes done, and I was, man, I was done. Go figure. And I didn't, don't know if I uh, did a good or bad show or any of that. I, sometimes they're funny. Sometimes they're informative. Sometimes they're not. But just like daily life, you know, this is what this is about. How life is for me, not how life is for you. I don't know how life is for you. I only know what you tell me. So if you tell me, my life sucks and I want to be in a spaceship going away from all you fucking losers... You know, that's not going to make me want to speak with you, <laughs> chatter with what text at you, or interact with you. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I'm, I'm Kvetchen. Uh, I want to go to Miami. Uh, nice Jewish wine. Uh, because, well, you people, you are, you are all scum, and you're taking up all my good oxygen and I, I want it back. Thank you. See, because that's what we got. We got people like that in fucking control. Oh, man. Henry Kissinger was what, a glorified arms dealer. Went into the Middle East in the 1970s and did everything that you're seeing now. <laughs> this, is, this is the results of all that good work done in the 1970s. <laughs> Everybody happy? <laughs> yeah, well, we're only paying $2 a gallon for gas today. And, and see, what, it doesn't even matter. As long as you're using it, why don't you not use gas for a day? See what happens. See, but people can't, we're, we're trapped. When I was in the car world, I needed my car. Ah, I don't forget these things. I just uh, changed my life to fit a different destiny, I suppose. Because <laughs> um, for me to live where I'm at with the lifestyle that I led in the United States wouldn't fit. I would. This wouldn't happen. So I had to reevaluate my priorities <laughs> and and come to different decisions about what I thought should and shouldn't be and joined up with Cirque and this is what we came up with because we're a, a partnership <laughs> and wow I guess it sounds like bragging but I'm happily married and I live in a nice place that's decent and people are decent to me and I get along with those I encounter during the day and try not to kill anyone. So far, so good. And we're going to call that uh, Rappy Crappy for the night. That show, I don't know. I couldn't get my hands around the Control Games Part 4, but I think I ranted and raved enough about the things I think that control us. And that the way that you see it is all that matters, you know. If you want to see an insult as a compliment, it might make you seem like a lunatic to other people, but we're, and there'd be nothing to be mad about at that point. <laughs> so, yeah, all I'm saying is that it's just a matter of how you look at it. So, we'll catch you next time on 20% off, because I'm getting about... 20% off right now. And what do we got coming up? This is Thursday night. <clears throat> Tomorrow and Wednesday and Friday at 7 p.m. on the East Coast of the U.S. We got Graham Z in the Rocket Chair podcast. And she was, uh, she was on there reading something yesterday. To, see, and I got it confused with Grimner because I don't. I've got a terrible memory when I smoke. But at least I remember the information. Maybe not who told it to me, but I usually know the important stuff sticks, you know. Because I'm smart, Michael, I'm smart. Anyway, 11 o'clock on the East Coast on Friday night. You got Moose Girl and Grimner doing the Freaker's Ball. Saturday at noon Eastern. <laughs> 
I do the dark table. Sometimes I grab me a hostage. Sometimes they escape and I do it alone. But you never know on the dark table. Sunday morning, we got Grimner coming in with the blues. Plays into trivia. And then Hal Anthony comes on at 3 o'clock from behind the woodshed and throws a little common sense into the common day mind. Monday night, 7 o'clock on the East Coast. Scott Grimner comes up with Grim Leftovers. Those are the stories he never hit on the Freaker's Ball and others. Tuesday, I come back at 1 o'clock on the East Coast with In a Perfect World. Sometimes I'm Vinny-less, sometimes I'm not. We just never know. And then, uh, again, Wednesday is Graham Z, 7 o'clock on uh, the Rocket Chair. And Thursday, it's me again, 2 o'clock on the East Coast with 20% off. So thanks a lot for hanging out with me today. Everybody from The Real Liberty and others out there, I had fun <laughs> giving you my side of the equation. So we'll see you later, and thanks a lot. Roger Wilco and Al.